A new bombshell report alleges that spy chips have been found in hardware used by over 30 companies, including Apple and Amazon. The hardware was installed by Chinese company Supermicro and could have enabled China to gather intellectual property and trade secrets from American companies. Apple, Amazon and Supermicro have all denied the initial report. Relations between the U.S. and China have already been strained with an ongoing trade war underway. Here to discuss how this report could impact those trade negotiations is Michael Hershen. He's director at Eurasia Group and Clark Packard, Trade Policy Council at R Street Institute. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Michael, let's just kind of get started with that very big question. This does not seem like something that moves those trade negotiations forward in a very positive light. Well, I think that's right. Either the Bloomberg report or Vice President Pence's speech. I think the vice president's speech was particularly notable because this is really the first time that we've had a U.S. official at such a senior level attack China not just on trade, but really across the broad set of issues in which the U.S. is increasingly in competition with China. So this is showing that the U.S. is committed to a confrontational approach to China. And I think in terms of the trade negotiations, if you're a policymaker in Beijing, you're thinking, Anything that I put on the table at this point is probably not going to be enough because this is a broad, concerted pushback by the U.S. against China. And Beijing is increasingly of the mind that really the U.S. objective here is to contain China, not just to strike a narrow trade deal. So it's another reason to think that de-escalation is quite unlikely in this trade dispute anytime soon. Clark, do, do the recent deals with Canada, Mexico, South Korea, do they increase the pressure? on China or do they make uh, the prospect of a, a deal between the U.S. and China more likely? Oh, well, I think they increase. Sorry. Clock. Oh, sorry. Well, Apologies. yeah, I mean, look, I think once you sort of clear the deck with the prior NAFTA uh, negotiation, um, the United States should then pivot to China. I mean, I think the hacking story today is, is a perfect example of why the United States needs to build a big, large coalition, challenge China's trade practices. Um, and really get serious about this. I mean, this is really the focus that, that the trade apparatus in the United States should be focusing on, not on, you know, tariffs on steel and, and, and aluminum uh, or NAFTA. It, it's China is the big question mark, the, the elephant in the room. Clark, I'm, I'm just wondering, though, I mean, does the United States even want to negotiate? It seems like we have one tactic. It does not work with the way that China policymakers like to do their negotiations. We're not really moving any closer to the way they want to talk this through. I, well, I, I think that's right. I mean, I think once you see some of the fallout from the tariffs um, and, and some of the pain being inflicted on the United States economy from the, the Trump administration's tariffs, I, I think that there will be uh, maybe a more concerted effort to, to try to de-escalate the situation with China at, at the negotiating table rather than kind of going back and forth with a tit for tat on tariffs. Michael, you said that uh, this, this all gives the impression to China uh, that the United States' policy is, is more one of a comprehensive containment strategy. Is that correct? Do you think that that's actually taking shape in the administration right here? That's one of the big questions right now. And really where the question lies is with the president, because President Trump's America First policies are all about narrowing U.S. objectives to focus on things like trade. When you have rhetoric from some of the administration that would, ex would um, imply that we're gearing up for a broad pushback on China in foreign policy and economic diplomacy, you have to wonder, is the president ultimately committed to that approach as well? So I think we're in for a more confrontational relationship. The breadth of, of commitment to that still an open question. 